Thanks so much for joining us on the program. I am Abosedi Adenio Adiremi. You can join the conversation now on X, formerly Twitter, using the hashtag Beyond 100 Days and tag at TVC News NG. President Bola Tinubu will on Wednesday present the 2024 appropriation bill to the National Assembly. Some weeks back, the chairman, Senate Committee on Appropriation, Senator Solomon Adiola, during the inaugural meeting of the committee, had promised that the National Assembly would ensure that the 2024 budget is passed before the 31st of December 2023. National Assembly correspondent Joke Adisa joins me now on the program. Joke, Wednesday is 29th of November. Does it seem we are on course for a January to December budget cycle? Like typically, how long does it take the National Assembly to consider and pass the bill? Well, I will say, the, uh, I think <clears throat> from uh, what has happened today at the Federal Executive Council meeting, uh, what this means is that the National Assembly will get busier in the days ahead, uh, looking at the fact that the president is slated to uh, present the uh, budget to uh, the, the estimate uh, budget to the adjudication of the National Assembly on Wednesday, which, which of, of course the calendar has started. And so what this means is that in the days ahead, after that presentation, uh, the National Assembly will get busier. You have government uh, bodies, agencies, ministries, departments coming to their respective committees to defend their projection for the year. The, uh, the 2023 budget will also uh, come forward to, to tell how well they have expended it and how well they have judiciously used it. So in the, in, the, in the days ahead, certainly the National Assembly will get busier and MDAs, particularly uh, those that are under one committee or another will have the opportunity to come before uh, the different committees at over, well, I mean, about 139 of them to, all, to come up and say, okay, this is what we are using our monies for in the, in the new year. But uh, one thing that is also uh, germane uh, from what we have seen uh, is the fact that the budget now is about 27.5 trillion era, which is about 5.7 trillion era above what uh, was presented in 2033 by the last administration. And so uh, you also recall that you also know that this government, this will be the first uh, budget that the Tirumba administration will be presenting to the joint session of the two chambers. And so the time uh, is, is, has, has actually been a major issue preparing this. You know that usually uh, what the law says is that the budget should be presented uh, at least three months before the end of the year. And what this means is that the parliament this time, uh, which has resolved to uh, keeping strictly with the January to December cycle, would have to work all around the clock to meet this target to ensure that the budget is passed by uh, December. So we are, hope, we, are, we are looking forward to see how the, of course, the National Assembly has restated its commitment to also do a thorough job, to do due diligence as far as the uh, fiscal, uh, budget, fiscal uh, document is concerned. So we look at how all this pan out. Uh, we've seen that over the years, every year we see uh, the, the budget in, I mean, increase uh, 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 from the previous one. So, and this, of course, is not an exemption, uh, but basically Nigerians will want a budget that will impact positively on their lives. When you talk of uh, debt servicing, you talk of recurrent expenditure, you talk of capital expenditures, these are the things that uh, make up the budget. And so, but for the average Nigerian, it's that the life should be improved. And so that is what Nigerians will be looking forward to as President Bola Tinumbu uh, comes to lay the budget on Wednesday. Absolutely, Joke. And you have covered the National Assembly for quite some time. So from your experience, how long does it take typically for lawmakers to deliberate on uh, the issues contained in the budget and uh, eventually pass it? Well, if I if I can hear you well, uh, I think what what Nigerians uh, like I've said, what they want is uh, the fact that mm. that with the fact that there should be something that they can hold on to say yes, this budget is what is ours. They should be able to link up with the budget to say it is ours and we own it and we also uh, uh, abide by it. But what we have seen over the years is that it's uh, the, it has practically become. Uh, 
a process where an, an annual uh, ritual where you see all these things happen and Nigerians don't really feel the impact. But this time, I'm sure Nigerians are hoping with what the President Tinubu administration has put on, on ground, which is determination to also impact positively on the lives of the people. I'm sure Nigerians will look forward uh, to uh, having an appreciable intake in what will come out of this budget. That basically is uh, the concern of every Nigerian. Let me be able to have uh, what to eat, a good source of income, and all that, and Nigerians will be okay. So we are hoping and, uh, that in the, in the days ahead, as the National Assembly, as President Abola Tinubu comes uh, prepared, uh, lays, lays the budget, and, uh, and uh, the National Assembly begins work on, on this fiscal document, Nigerians can only hope and pray that this time, uh, beyond the fact that it is, uh, it, 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 is a, it, it is something that is expected every year, it's a yearly ritual, Nigerians will be able to hold on to something to say, yes, this is our budget and we have to relate with it. Yes, indeed. And as you have said, the countdown is on. It's less than 48 hours from now. We expect the president to make that presentation and Nigerians will get to know what the content of that document is. Jokia is a National Assembly correspondent. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. With the recent Court of Appeal judgment sacking some governors and lawmakers and affirming others, Minister of Labor and Employment Simon Lalong has received his certificate of return as a senator to represent Plateau South District. The Labor Minister received the certificate in Abuja, the country's capital. He is yet to resign as a Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. On the 7th of November, the Court of Appeal in Abuja affirmed the judgment of a tribunal which declared Mr. Lalong the winner of the Plateau South senatorial election. The three-member panel of the appellate court, led by Alfreda Williams Dawudu, held that the tribunal was correct in its decision. Now, the eye of the people is on when the minister will resign his position or when actually will the president replace him now that he has a sure mandate of four years. Joining us to speak more on this is former Commissioner for Information in Plateau State during the tenure of Governor Simon Dalong, Yakubu Dati. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Well, as a close ally to the minister, do fill us in on his mood at present. Is it that of confusion or of excitement? Well, uh, to start with, uh, the former Governor Right Honorable Simon Bakula Long is uh, actually contested to the Senate. Uh, so the victory at the tribunal is also a victory that has reverberated across Plateau State. Uh, like you well know, it uh, also affected other seats. Uh, so there's a lot of joy. And uh, he has always maintained a stance that uh, he has a boss. And that is like a traffic. When there's a traffic, there's a water, there's a controller. And that is his boss, Asiwaju Ahmed Bola Tinubu, president of Nigeria. So as his minister, he believes, and he has said it, that he needs to discuss with his boss first before the boss will show him the direction to take. So we are quite excited on the plateau that indeed it is a clarion call to serve from the people. Uh, we also await the decision that Mr. President will take. Now, the, uh, Mr. Lalong has actually received the certificate of return, and some would say they're actually not surprised that he received it, considering that the position he holds at the moment is appointive, which is uh, subjective to Mr. President's assessment. Uh, how do you see that? Sorry, can you come again? Yes, I'm talking about the concerns raised by some people that they're actually not surprised that Mr. Lalong collected the certificate of return because the position he currently occupies as a minister is appointive, subjective to the president's assessment. How do you react to their, their call and the expression of no surprise? Well, it's actually a call to service at every point in time. Uh, we are talking about uh, a gentleman, right Honorable Simon Bakula Long, who has been uh, held elective position for the past, uh, let's say, almost 20 years. He was the longest serving speaker in the Plateau State House of Assembly. 
He also uh, was the governor of Plateau State for a two-term governor for eight years before he contested for the Senate. So his life has been all about service. And uh, you recall that he was also the director general of the Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu Shetima Presidential Campaign uh, Council, where he uh, showed his mettle. And so it's all, his life has been all about service. And to him, at every point in time, so long as there is a call to serve, he's ever ready to serve. And uh, for the people of Plateau, especially the people of Southern Zone, they came out in mass to vote for Right Honorable Simon Bakola Long. So it's their desire that he will come back home to serve them as their senator. But like he has always said, he also has a boss. And so based on the discussion he will have his boss, he will take opposition. So it's not uh, really about being in the Senate or being in the National Assembly. At the end of the day, it's being of service to people, to Nigeria, and to humanity. And when will this discussion with this boss happen? Do you have an idea? Sorry? When will this discussion he intends to have with Mr. President take place? Well, there's a lot of things that will also go on because uh, that is also a personal decision he has to take. Uh, but we in Plateau are very excited because as I speak with you, uh, out of the three senators in Plateau State, two are of the APC party and one is pending a rerun, which we are sure we are going to get. Uh, the National Assembly House of Representatives, we already have about, uh, out of the eight, we have six in the kitty. The other two are Labour Party. And out of the 22 House of Assembly, we have uh, 20 under APC, while YPP and Labour Party has one each. Uh, so we are very confident because the issue is it's a reverse issue that happened in Zamfara, that's happened in Plateau, because the PDP has, uh, has, uh, did, did not comply with existing court orders. And so they, have to be, they ceased to have the authority to even operate. So, and that is why people that contested in the party uh, were looked at as independent candidates, because, uh, and the constitution does not have role for independent candidates, and therefore their votes were avoided which gave uh, Philip to the APC. And so with a lot of excitement, uh, Plateau people are looking forward and praying that their distinguished senator will come back and represent them and be with them at home and be also be able to be closer to the people. Uh, in spite of, uh, irrespective of where he will be, he will continue to offer service because this is a government he's talked out his neck for. And uh, for whatever position he will be, whatever decision that will take, he will continue to play his role as a statesman to ensure the progress of the country and to his party as a whole. Indeed. And, uh, you know, I would have really loved just to just juxtapose the situation that uh, Mr. Lalong is facing now with what became of his uh, partner, that former governor of Ibon State, Dave Omahi, who actually had to drop his position as chief whip of the Senate to take up ministerial appointment. And I'm, well, you have said that you're just waiting for him to make the decision. But do you think he could actually just tow that path and uh, while his life is about service, maybe he just continues as a minister. Well, the, the point, like I said, it, it, it's all about service. And uh, we know that the president wants him to continue to serve because of the excellence show he's showing in leadership. But we are also, uh, there's also a push from his constituency who have uh, called on him to come and represent them as a senator. And so at the end of the day, it's actually a personal decision that he will take. But for most of us who are from his constituency, our dream and desire is that we can have our own, that we can call our senator, who will be closer to us, closer to the people, and then be able to deliver the dividends of democracy. Uh, but in a bigger uh, scale is the president, like he said, his boss, who will see the bigger picture and see where he fits in. Already in Plateau State, Lalong has already laid a very a good foundation of peaceful coexistence, uh, development, and uh, inclusive governance, which has re brought relative peace in Plateau for the past eight years. And it is in that light that he also brought a successor, who is in the person of Professor Nenta Yilwada, uh, development experts, uh, renewable energy expert, and ICT guru, who uh, has 
the desire to reach out to the youth who has been reaching out to the youth to be able to move the state a step further in that direction. And that is why there is so much excitement in Plateau State with the turn of events. And we believe that uh, for wherever he is, whether he's a minister, uh, Governor Lalong is as minister or as senator, he will continue to play his fatherly role in supporting the existing, the incoming government of uh, Professor Nentawe Yelweda. Well, we'll wait to see the decision he actually makes because it's a big show he's wearing at the moment, having to uh, constantly interact with organized labor to halt strikes and ensure that uh, the Nigerian workforce is actually productive. But let's talk a bit about the politics going yeah. on in Plateau State. Uh, the opposition APC is now to lead the State House of Assembly following the court order a sacking of PDP uh, lawmakers. How do you react to that? Uh, would you actually say you have the backing and support of the people to do that? Yes, there is clearly that uh, uh, Dr. Yilwada has the support of the people because uh, from the, even the appeal court judgment, it voided the votes that were cast in three local governments where, uh, where there was massive rigging. And those local governments were Mangu, Just South, and Just North. So with the removal of those votes, uh, Dr. Nentawe came out as ha having the highest lawful caste votes. And that, uh, in addition to the fact that the PDP does not have structure, has made him emerge as uh, the governor. In fact, he is a man that is well accepted. And uh, the fact that people came out to celebrate instantaneously across and the length and breadth of Plateau State, indeed Nigeria, shows its acceptability. And uh, why I say Nigeria is that Plateau is very significant and important, especially within the North Central, the Middle Belt, Nigeria, because uh, it plays, it's like a signal to most of the states that are surrounding. And that is why uh, the direction that Plateau takes leads other states. Then a uh, little wonder that most of the successful primaries that uh, gave back to successful presidents we are done in Plateau, from MQ Abiola to Asiwaju and uh, several others. And that is why uh, people, the interest in Plateau is beyond just uh, the Plateau people because uh, what happens in Plateau reverberates across the country. And that is why we are happy and uh, everybody, men of goodwill are happy that this uh, has taken the turn of events. And uh, we also want to say on this, commend the judiciary who have also stood by the truth and be able to be bold to be able to stand by the truth. You mentioned the people came out to celebrate, but they're actually those who hold opposing views, who are asking questions about what the APC was able to achieve all the while it was in power in Plateau State. Well, it is very, for anybody to ask that question is very <laughs> interesting because everybody knew that uh, Plateau has been a, a, a killing field, so to speak, where there were lots of attacks, where there were lots of suspicion among people living there, uh, instigated by ethnic and religious uh, diversity. Uh, the past administration of Right Honorable Simon Bakula Long working closely with uh, the National Assembly members, with the leader of the caucus, Right Honorable Ahmed Idris, uh, other members of the National Assembly, who are including Honorable Yusuf Gagdi, and uh, even uh, Honor uh, Honorable Bagos and others in different parties, all joined hand together under the leadership of Right Honorable Ahmed Idris to support the peaceful initiatives being deployed uh, by the governor. And also, by way of accommodation, the governor was able to create an enabling environment and create a sense of belonging to every kith and kin. And so businesses begin to, began to flourish. In fact, during that administration, there was time that most weekends, you have to book ahead of time before you even get a hotel room. And Plateau gradually was becoming the tourism headquarters uh, for workshops and all that, it was the des destination to go. And that in itself is what uh, is making people happy because with the coming of this administration, uh, uh, Dr. Yelwoda uh, administration, it will build on those gains. For the past six uh, months that the PDP has held sway, Plato has been pulled back like another 80s. All the gains are being reversed 
under the PDP. We witnessed a lot of bloodshed, a lot of attacks, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of pettiness by the Governor Mutfang administration. You can imagine when we are fighting on unemployment, uh, the APC government gave more than a thousand youths employment, and immediately this uh, PDP government came in. He sacked all these youths that were offered employment. And that, uh, he, I mean, even his supporters were wondering, what is this man up to? Uh, at the end of the day, uh, these are part of the people that welcome the appeal court decision that sacks uh, the Mutfang administration. Uh, well, Mr. Dati, uh, it as, is, it stand, <laughs> as it stands, you know, just now we're showing a video uh, showing the people of Plateau State actually welcoming the governor, Caleb Muftuang, when he returned uh, from Abuja. You know, he received massive support, people gathering around him, celebrating for what he has done in the past six months. And you remember he has a right of appeal and has, has as a matter of fact, indicated interest to appeal this judgment at the Supreme Court. So I'm wondering if your party is actually willing and ready to accept the verdict of the Supreme Court if it's not in your favor? Well, the, the fact remains that we are talking with about a character who has uh, perfected the art of double speak. You know, uh, this is the same governor that three days ago, he was part of the delegation where the chairman of the PDP Governors Forum, uh, Governor Bala Mohammed, spoke and said that the PDP governors have accepted the verdict only to turn around and go to jobs and hire and gather hired crowds, pauperize people to the airport to come and welcome him. And the irony is that yes, welcome yes, him yes, from yes, where? Yes, this is a yes, man that yes, spends yes, four days yes, out of yes, seven yes, days yes, in Abuja. Yes, Every day is in and out. Is there any evidence to prove Sorry? that the crowd was actually hired? Is there any evidence to prove that he has a right and he's choosing to appeal? Would you blame him for doing that? Well, the fact remains that if you ask the, 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 the verdict of the judiciary and you join your party to say you accept it, why turn around to hire crowds that will come and cast aspersion at the judiciary? And that is the, the problem we are having because we have a man who is double-faced in his activities. To, when he comes to Abuja, he tries to romance with the APC government and pretends to the uh, Asiwa Judas with him. When he goes back to John, he goes to wipe up the, our, our uh, religious and ethnic head, uh, fault lines. In fact, what they say every day is that the APC government is trying to Islamize Plato. And the question is, Islamize how? The same well, uh, 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 trajectory... Then, do, you expect, do you expect that when the governor meets the president, he uh, doesn't show some level of support? It's one Nigeria, and it should be the interest of the people, and uh, it shouldn't be a, a, around party lines, I want to believe. So I, I do not think he would expect yes. that when he sees the president, he shouldn't show courtesy as and, is required. But that's too much we'll actually be able to take and that, the program. And, 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 that is, and that is, and that is why the president reciprocated. You recall that se Senator Oluremi Tinubu... Yeah, my final thought is we want to call on the... Sorry? We want yes, to call on the security on. agencies to, to, to focus on the activities of this governor. Because like a bull in a china shop, he wants to pull down the house, the state, before he leaves. As I speak with you, he has relocated the Plateau State House of Assembly to his place of abode, to the government house in Joss. All that to ensure that the members that were duly brought in by the appeal court will not be allowed to resume in the House of Assembly. That is simply a path to anarchy. He has become a, like a loose cannon in the state. And there's, we, we, there are rumors that he has targeted the houses and properties of prominent people in Plateau State, including These the president of the uh, Court of Appeal, APC. And it would be uh, very important yeah? for you to prove them because you are on national television. But I sincerely appreciate you for joining us on the program. Former Commissioner for Information in Plateau State during the tenure of Governor Samuel Along, Yakubu Dati, thanks a whole lot for joining us. Thank you very much. That's our program today. Watch a repeat broadcast at midnight and at 6 a.m. I'm Abosedi. I didn't know I do anything.